Hi, welcome to this episode of the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries. I'm your host, John. This episode focuses on Stalker because it is National Stalker Awareness Month and we're taking a look back on the cases of the most dangerous stalkers who are serial killers. This is the case of H.H. H. Holmes. He is said to be America's first serial killer. And this is kind of what he looks like, guys. H.H. H. Holmes. And we're going to tell you a little bit about his case, which is pretty intricate. In 1861, Herman Webster Mudgeon was born in New Hampshire. It is said that in, at an early age, he was fascinated with skeletons and soon became obsessed with death. And the question is, how many more people in the late 1800s were just like this guy and didn't get any notoriety? She was a doctor. There might have been 10,000 more guys just like H.H. H. Holmes. But he was a doctor and a con man. So he kind of got his name in the limelight it may have been this interest that led him to pursue medicine after graduating high school at 16 Munchen can change his name to Henry Howard Holmes and later in life would be known as H.H. H. Holmes There's going to be a lot of dark in this because this is when they were just figuring out how to take photographs of people in the late 1800s. Holmes studied medicine at a small school in Vermont before being accepted into the University of Michigan medical school. While enrolled in medical school, Holmes stole cadavers from the laboratory, burned or disfigured them, and then planted the bodies, making it look as if they had been killed in an accident. The scandal behind it was that Holmes would take out insurance policies of these people before planting the bodies, before planting the bodies and would collect the money once the bodies were observed. You get away with stuff like that back then if you were just creative enough and sick enough like this guy. I must admit that's not a bad scam. Seemed to have worked for him. Kind of sick and demented, but... A lot of people were sick and demented back then. Like I said earlier, there was probably 10,000 more people like H.H. H. Holmes. And then there's theories out there that say he was Jack the Ripper just moved to America. That's all the only difference was if Jack the Ripper decided to move to America, this was him people say. In 1884, 
he passed his medical exams and in 1885 he moved to Chicago where he got a job working in a pharmacy under the alias Dr. Henry H. Holmes. When the owner of the drugstore passed away, he left his wife to take over the responsibilities of the store. However, Holmes convinced the widow to let him use the store and buy the store. The widow soon went missing and was never seen again. Holmes claimed that she moved to California, but this could never be verified. After Holmes became the owner of the drugstore, he purchased an empty lot across the street. He designed and built a three-story hotel, which the neighborhood called the Castle. During its 1889 construction, Holmes hired and fired several construction crews so that no one would have a clear idea of what he was doing. He was, in, in fact, designing a murder castle. After construction was complete in 1891, Holmes placed ads in newspapers offering jobs for young women and advertised the castle as a place of lodging. He also placed ads presenting himself as a wealthy man looking for a wife. All Holmes' employees, hotel guests, fiancés, and wives were required to have life insurance policies. Holmes paid the premiums as long as they listed him as the beneficiary. Most of his fiancés and wives would suddenly disappear, as did many of the employees and guests, people in the neighborhood, eventually reported eventually reported that they saw many women enter the castle but never saw them exit. This guy was a little bit sick. A lot bit sick, I should say. In 1893, Chicago was given the honor of hosting the World's Fair. The first World's Fair, a cultural and social event to celebrate the 400th anniversary of Columbus's discovery of America. The event was scheduled from May to October and attracted millions of people all over the world. When Holmes heard that the World's Fair was coming to Chicago, he looked at it as, as an opportunity. He knew many visitors would be searching for lodging near the fair and believed many of them would be women whom he could easily seduce into staying at his hotel. <clears throat> After being lured into the hotel, many of these out-of-town visitors would never be seen again. Yeah, they say Jack the Ripper was a doctor. By the way, his by the way he left his victims. And a lot of people think that this was Jack the Ripper just moved to the states. That's all. The only difference was he went under a different alias and. He lived in a different area. The first floor of the castle had several stores. The two upper levels contained homes' offices and a hundred rooms that were used as living quarters. Some of these rooms were soundproof and contained gas lines so that Holmes could asphyxiate his guests whenever he felt like it. Throughout the building, there were trap doors, peepholes, stairways that led nowhere. 
and chutes that led into the basement. The basement was designed as Holmes' own laboratory. It had a dissecting table, stretching rack, and crematory. Sometimes he would send the bodies down the chute, dissect them, strip them of the flesh, and sell them as human skeleton models to med students. That is pretty sick. In other cases, he would choose to cremate or place the bodies in pits of acid. Through it all, Holmes traveled throughout the U.S. committing insurance scams with his accomplice, Benjamin Peitzel. Once the World's Fair had ended, Chicago's economy was in a slump. Therefore, Holmes abandoned the castle and focused on insurance scams, committing random murder along the way. During this time, Holmes stole horses from Texas, shipped them to St. Louis, and sold them, making a fortune. He was arrested for the swindle, and he was sent to jail. While in jail... He cohorted a new insurance scam with his cellmate, Marion Hedgepence. Holmes said he would take out an insurance policy for $10,000, fake his own death, and then provide Hedgepence with $500 in exchange for a lawyer who could help him if he had any problems would arise. Once Holmes was released from jail on bail, he attempted his plan, however, the insurance company was suspicious and did not pay him. Holmes then decided to attempt a similar plan in Philadelphia. This time he would have Heitzel fake his own death. However, during this scam, Holmes actually killed Peitzel and collected the money for himself. So yeah, there was no need for this guy to commit murder. He just enjoyed it. So he, by definition, he was one of the first serial killers, if not the first. But then again, if he was Jack the Ripper, then he wasn't the first, now was he? In 1894, Marion Hedgepence was angry that he did not receive any money on the initial scam and told police about the scam Holmes had planned. The police tracked Holmes, finally catching up to him in Boston where they arrested him and held him on an outstanding warrant for the Texas horse swindle. This guy was said to have killed kids, put them in boxes with a gas line in it, and just turn on the gas and just listen to them. This guy was really sick. That's an awful thing to do. And he would just stand outside the box and listen to the kids as they died. I mean, this guy was sick. Probably some of the sickest things he did weren't even on record. At the same time of his arrest, Holmes appeared as if he was prepared to flee the country and police became suspicious of him. 
Chicago police investigated Holmes' castle where they discovered his strange and efficient methods for committing torturous murders. Many of the bodies they located were so badly dismembered and decomposed that it was hard for them to determine, to determine exactly how many bodies there really were. The police investigation spread through Chicago, Indianapolis, and Toronto. That their invest while conducting their investigation in Toronto, police discovered the bodies of the Feitzel children who had gone missing sometimes during Holmes's insurance fraud spree, linking Holmes to their murders. Police arrested him and he was convicted of their murders. He also confessed to 28 other murders. However, through investigations and missing persons reports, it is believed that Holmes is responsible for up to 200 murders. And it's probably more. I would venture to guess it might be 500. Or even 600. They didn't report everything back then. And they weren't as uh, as wise to the murder game back then. So, who knows how many people this guy actually murdered. And if he was Jack the Ripper, you can add that too to the body count. Anybody that would kill a kid and lock him in a box and turn the gas on and disgusts me. No respect for this guy at all. In May 1896, one of America's first serial killers, H.H. H. Holmes, was hanged. H.H. H. Holmes was hanged, and the castle was remodeled as an attraction and named the Holmes Horror Castle. However, it burnt to the ground shortly before its opening. So just as quick as it was put up, it was even more quickly disposed of. Probably from one of the parents of the boys and girls that this scumbag killed. Yeah. Make no doubt about it, this guy was a scumbag. And he stalked his victims by putting classified ads in newspapers and pretending to be looking for a wife. When really, he just wanted to put him, put them through his house of torture. It was nothing but a game to this guy. He stopped them, set them up in Places that he knew 
to kill them. And he killed them. Disgusting individual H.H. Holmes was. That just about does it for this week's case of the most dangerous stalkers, the serial killers. And this is the case of H.H. H. Holmes. True believers, this is John for the freedom to draw character, to draw unsolved mysteries. Peace out.